Praise the Lord, mighty prophet of the Lord. Amen, Pastor Raymond. The Lord has spoken with me uh, in a very, very major way this morning. Uh, the Lord spoke with me about the revival that is coming to Brazil again. And in this conversation, the Lord showed me the most historic healing anointing that is going to visit Brazil. And uh, in this conversation, again, the Lord took me to Brazil and showed me a tremendous shocking visitation that is going to visit the nation of Brazil. A massive revival. And I see cripples walking. I see the blind seeing, the deaf hearing, the mute speaking, paralytic getting up and walking from wheelchairs. Many, many cripples get off their wheelchairs. I see many people bleeding diseases, wounds drying up, cancers, tumors dissolving, and all diseases under the sun will be healed in Brazil. Now, this is coming right after the conversation the Lord had yesterday when the Lord spoke to me about this particular woman, and I think she's with straight hair, black hair, she's raised this straight. She's a white woman, white skinned, and I think she's wearing a tie, the top a little bit tight at the feet there, crippled, totally crippled. And the Lord showed me where she came from, how she used to be taken to the restroom, you know. She used to be taken. She talked about how she used to be taken to, to chow, to restroom, you know, to refresh and uh, how it was difficult and then uh, as the lord walks me towards her the glory uh, then leads his servant and touches this woman and she gets up with a weak leg and begins to walk in a very unbelievable scene when the legs are now strengthening and strengthened as she's walking and all the way she walks and i remember to walk with her toward the end she walks as though she wants to fall she's, she's not walked before so she's the weak leg, the thin leg, trying to fall. She's not a young lady. And then she reaches the end, and I come back with her. And then uh, she almost falls a bit because we're tired. And there's a piece of metal, like an end to a metal. But she almost, uh, I fear she would knock that metal, but she, she didn't. So she sits down, saying she's tired, she's not used to walking. Now, this reminds me very well of the same situation when the Lord was sending me to the nation of Finland in Helsinki, when the Lord spoke with me again about the healing service in Helsinki, and this person I thought was walking as though figure skating, and only and then I said in the prophecy that a month before that there is a ramp that is climbing up a metal ramp, and I'll be climbing with that person to the altar which has been raised. And then uh, when I arrived in Finland, then I realized it was this lady who had a very malformed femur, and the knees were the problem, and the knees were knocking each other as she walked, as though that's the kind of figure skating I was sketching, even in the conference before the healing service in Finland. But now we see that the Lord has turned his attention to Brazil, and is beginning to talk about visiting the church in Brazil, visiting the sick in Brazil, the cripples of Brazil, the HIV of Brazil, the lame of Brazil, the, all the wheelchairs being abandoned in Brazil, the bleeding diseases, cancers, tumors, many kinds of malformations. This type of tremendous healing anointing the Lord showed me this night is very historic and I have not seen it before. It's absolutely shocking. It's a shocking, historic healing anointing. I do not know, even myself, I wonder what the Lord is going to do in Brazil. Probably a little bit more than what we have known since the Lord inaugurated this ministry. So, the message still remains the same. The Lord is saying that these are the days when revival is consuming the earth, it is consuming the church, and those nations that will have tender hearts of obedience, to hear the instruction of the word, to hear the words of Jesus, the words of Jehovah the Father, and then to do them. And to hear and to do are connected by the foundation of obedience. And that means, if you listen very carefully to the words that the Lord is speaking right now to the nation, He's speaking, repent. Repent 
repent, repentance, repentance and the turning away from sin. And so for those nations that will obey and has do what the words of the Lord is saying, are saying, then we shall pour his glory into their hearts and land and church. And they will see a tremendous revival at a time when the most decayed apostles is taking place in the United States. There are so many false prophets in America. They are speaking all things from left to right, center to wherever. All, everyone is getting up and speaking all what they want. There are many false prophets across Asia and everywhere. So this is where the problem is. The Lord is essentially saying that Brazilian people seem to have a tight heart for his word. That is why he's already speaking to me about his intention to visit them in a historic manner. Their intention of me to their country alone testifies to the condition of their hearts, to their disposition of tenderness and humbleness in their hearts. And so, the Lord is visiting the church and visiting the nations and preparing the glorious way for the coming of the Messiah. And I think this is a very important place at which even the church now, in all the other nations, apart from Brazil, has to be awakened. Many people in the church must now read into this. They must read into this. But we may, from this point on, begin investing our treasures, investing our time and resources, spiritual resources, into the coming of the Messiah, the events of rapture. I have seen the Messiah coming, and time is running out. And I remember too well that many times when the Lord went to cities like Capernaum, and he did tremendous works in Capernaum, the crippled got up and walked, the blind saw, the deaf heard, the mute spoke, and so forth and so forth. These miracles, little did the people of Capernaum know that these miracles essentially testify Jesus. They essentially, they preach Christ Jesus the Messiah. They preach the righteousness of the Lord. They pronounce the holiness of Jehovah. And so when the Lord announces in such manner, that he is coming to visit a nation the way he has done Kenya and Finland. Now Kenya and Finland turn up very mightily. Brazil is also going to be visited very mightily now, during the league. Venezuela was visited in historic ways, but she squandered it down. And it died. And so, my caution is very simple. That be unto Brazil even as Finland has done. They have gone all over to evangelize those miracles. They have gone to the town where the people were healed. All people came, they gathered around the healed person. They asked them what the feeling is. They asked them to walk. They, it was tremendous. Jesus was glorified and people became baptized. They received Jesus out of the evangelism of the miracles. But Brazil is coming to see even greater. And I think I'm going back to Finland to continue the good work that the Lord has begun there. And it will be tremendous. But there is an outriding underlying message here. So Katona when she saw the miracle, she saw them and then she went on with her life abnormal. Little had she known that the Lord himself had visited. The Holy Spirit had visited the land. And that's why you see the Lord turning around now and rebuking Capernaum for not using the miracles to stir up and sustain a revival that would stand at this day. And Capernaum was known as the city of Jesus. Until today as you enter the ruins of that city, there is a pillar of God in the scape in the womb, the city of Jesus. And so I am drawing a lot from that in the sense that 
this announcement of this day speaks caution, speaks tremendous caution, and says that there is also tremendous responsibility that is bestowed unto the beholders of the miracles of this hour, the signs of wonders of this hour. That you may not be like Kapenaum. Because he eventually told Kapenaum, you are going to hell. Because he said, Sodom and Gomorrah, for that matter, because Kapenaum saw the miracles and failed to evangelize them, then he said, Sodom and Gomorrah is now holier than Kapenaum. Sodom and Gomorrah were the brothels of homosexuals, transsexuals, and prostitutes, and everything. He turned around because Kapenaum saw the miracles. Behold them. Witnessed them. And did nothing. So he turns around and says that Sodom and Gomorrah is holy altar. He's holier than Kapenaum. Because Kapenaum saw the miracles and did not repent. But the same thing, whenever we stand up and rebuke Brazil, if Brazil doesn't use these miracles right. Because Nineveh would rise, the Lord says Nineveh rises and rebukes the church, rebukes Brazil if she does not use these miracles here to stir up an eternal, an end time revival for entry into heaven. Because Nineveh would say, look, only Jonah came to us. And yet we repented in such cloth. And yet for you, the glory of the Lord himself has come to you. And healed your people, done such mighty work. And yet you have not repented. And that's why I am announcing a tremendous global revival coming to the nation. And I'm looking forward to visiting many nations, Australia, New Zealand, South Korea, to go all the way into Hong Kong to visit the U.S. also. The door is open now for the U.S., because this is now full blast. And many nations of Africa, including the North Africa, West Africa, and South Africa. Southern Africa. I am speaking with tremendous joy in my heart now, because finally the reality of the preparation for the coming of the Messiah have realized, have materialized and manifested in the eyes of the nation. The great visitation of Joel have been announced, the tremendous moments of righteousness have been proclaimed. The mighty works of God are coming back to the church. Deception is being cleaned off church. And the Lord is establishing and tiring very high to the pillar of his cloud that is visiting the nations of this hour. These are the works of the cloud of God that are visited the house at this hour. May those who have ears truly listen to the Lord and repent in righteousness and return to holiness and prepare for the glorious coming of Jesus. And joy consumes my heart so much today. I don't know how much the Lord is going to be in Brazil. It's unbelievable. But joy consumes me so much because I realize that the statements of Matthew 25 verse 13, the statements you see also in Matthew 24, and he says, For you, you prepare. Therefore, you prepare. Therefore, keep watch because you do not know the day. He is essentially saying that however much of persecution we may have suffered as Christians and church, our hour of deliverance is now nearer. Our Lord and Redeemer is now coming. This is the massive message that is coming through from the Lord that gives me so much joy. That when he begins to revive the nation, bring his power, restore the church, and straighten up and stand high righteousness. That also tells me that the hour of the coming of the Messiah has grown nearer. However much persecution the righteous few have suffered, now time is coming. When our Savior will deliver us into the safety of heaven, as he judges the sinful earth, this earth and everything, the drunkardness, the immorality, and the wealth of this earth, the things of the world, will come to an end soon. I have seen it with my eyes in the vision of the Lord. The Messiah is coming. Brazil prepare for a major division. Let the pastors come from all the cities and all the states of Brazil and flood Rio, the meeting in Rio. Let them come from all over the nation 
and go to Campo Grande, where the healing service will be. The tremendous visitation of God will be released. But from this point on, a massive revival in a nation that was Catholic may now come into the house of the Lord. Shalom and the Lord bless you, Brazil.